I really did think there's no point in this life. Like, I, I really felt there was, there was, I was not helping society in any way or myself. You are so much more powerful than you think. Like you do have the tools inside of you to help yourself. I'm Charlie and I am Living Proof. My symptoms all began from heel pain, um, calf pain, hip pain, all the muscles that run up one side of my body really. I could physically feel a lot of tension spread to my leg, my glute, and then it began to go into my back. For a long time, each symptom was just sort of by itself. And then it just was spreading more and more. And eventually it, the main problem was my back pain. That was the most debilitating pain. It really forced me to just lie on the floor. It was back pain that was just wrecking my life. To be honest, it stopped me from doing everything that I wanted. I mean, at first it was bearable and you have hope that maybe it will get better. Okay, I could still breathe and I could still eat actually, but other than that, I just felt like I was existing. It impacted my life a lot and so much that I really did think there's no point in this life. Like I, I really felt there was, there was, I was not helping society in any way or myself. And my parents saw me so miserable. And I thought, I can't take this anymore. So yeah, that was definitely the lowest point. I ended up seeing some of the best people because I get, kept getting redirected. A lot of physios just said, you've got weaknesses, therefore everything else is getting tight. Someone told me I had hip impingement and hip dysplasia. I got told I had degenerative disc disease. I had some fused vertebrae. Then some other rheumatologists thought that I probably had lupus. I was getting a lot of rashes and itchy ears. So there was, nothing was conclusive. That was really confusing for me and gave me no hope. The things I tried before finding the mind-body approach was pretty much everything that any person in the medical world can imagine. Um, I first tried physio, lots of physio. I tried remedies, I tried hot rubs, I tried heating, cooling, I tried acupuncture. I spent so much money on myofascial release. I tried CBD stuff. I tried lots of different pain medications. Um, some were the, the uh, morphine-based or the, it was called codridomol, cocodamol, that kind of stuff. So I tried a few of the very low doses of a type of antidepressant or anti-anxiety. I got up to quite a high dose and it was doing nothing. So I came off it. when I was dealing with the NHS and various doctors I really felt like they could only treat each symptom individually and they couldn't treat me as a person holistically for example they could only look at my hip and investigate that and then then look into my back and everything was connected I had pain everywhere and of course I couldn't just be having like seven different abnormalities that were all going wrong at that time it felt infuriating and it didn't feel like there was much direction. They, they, they can rule out life-threatening things, which is obviously good and gives you a bit of confidence that you're probably not gonna die tomorrow. But other than that, um, it just felt like they didn't have an answer. Sometimes I would get advice from one doctor, I would follow it and then get advice from another one and it would send me around in circles and spirals and you just feel like you have nowhere to go because everyone is saying something different, but apparently they're all speaking from the same team.
and I would read up on the internet or in books about how to release the psoas because that was causing me so much pain and the psoas muscle is known for being the muscle that's most connected to emotions and it's like the emotion regulator and it's basically it's the fight or flight muscle and when I read that I thought that's interesting but okay if there's a massive emotional connection to that muscle and that muscle's causing me so much problem maybe there is a, an emotional aspect to this and I said okay I think I need to explore this more. The first step in what was key to my recovery was learning. It was learning the science behind the nervous system about how pain works and yeah about how, how our nervous system regulates us. Um, once I had learnt those things then I could really believe that what I was feeling, my pain and some of my other symptoms was to do with this nervous system dysfunction and then the main thing was calming the nervous system. There's a doctor who has now passed away, a doctor called John Sarno. He wrote a book about this mind-body system and he observed all his patients who experienced a lot of chronic pain and he basically established some of the main findings on chronic pain is more related to your emotions your oppressed emotions really. I didn't realise how out of tune I was with my emotions. To be honest, some of the big things that I wasn't letting myself feel in my head were small things. So I felt like it wasn't important to feel them and, and so much that I didn't feel them that I didn't even know they were there. And it sounds quite hard to just be able to connect to your emotions and it does take a lot of practice, but the best way I found to do it was a journaling technique. There were a few resources guiding me to ways I could journal. And there was a technique suggested, which was you make three lists. One's about past childhood experiences. One's about your adult life experiences. And one is about your personality traits at the moment. It's stuff that could be causing you to have some built up tension inside, some stress or something being repressed. The idea is each day, every day, what I think it's important to do it every day at the beginning. You pick a topic off the list and you just write about it. You free write and you write like no one's watching. And the idea is at the end of it, you're going to rip that up or delete it on your computer, however you might choose to journal. And then there's, there's no inhibitions. You just go for it. And at first it felt so pointless. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to write about some stuff I'm annoyed at. I, I know that, but often, loads of stuff comes up that you don't think is going to come up. Um, the hand just kind of goes. Eventually, you actually just feel the emotions and your body doesn't think, I need to give you a symptom instead of feeling the emotions. Repressing emotions makes the nervous system feel unsafe. And when the nervous system feels unsafe, it switches on fight or flight mode. And when you get stuck in fight or flight, that's when all the symptoms arise. Sometimes I felt a lot of anxiety after journaling and it was very interesting because what was really happening was my body was switching off all the pain signals because it was actually connecting to how I was feeling emotionally and I was clearly feeling a lot of anxiety and it felt so strange to have less back pain and actually feel these emotions. I now understand that symptoms are so connected to our emotions that every time I do have a new symptom which I haven't eliminated because there's no cure for the human condition. Life is gonna go on and there's gonna be stresses. But the first thing I do think is how am I feeling now? And normally it is a message from my, my body that um, I need to tune into something. So now I feel completely different. I think, I really feel like I've been on a journey. I don't feel like I've just overcome back pain or overcome hip pain. Um, I think I just see life completely differently. The kind of pain and symptoms I was experiencing, I thought this, if there was something that was gonna work, it was gonna take years. But within weeks, I was feeling transformed. And within a month, I was doing things I thought I'd never do again. I was just walking around without back pain. I couldn't believe it. I love cycling. I've always been a cyclist. I feel very free on a bike, but now it makes me feel really, really proud. 
And so I genuinely, when I'm cycling along, I, I often think, wow, I'm amazing. This is crazy. By becoming indifferent to the pain, it takes away its power and it's no longer serving the purpose that it was. In hindsight, it would have been great if some of the really high up doctors who I was seeing, the, the hip surgeons, the back surgeons, if they had the knowledge and skills to be able to explain to me how my stress and emotions could be influencing my pain or just to guide me to a resource that would have taught me this. A piece of advice I give doctors treating chronic pain or unexplained illness is that really listen to your patients and let them feel heard. It's really important that, that the person has some hope. The nervous system feels unsafe if there's no hope and if you're fearful, that just brings on more pain. Advice that I give others suffering from chronic pain is that you are so much more powerful than you think. Like you do have the tools inside of you to help yourself.